Hello everybody. Uh, so we are talking about stereo, multi-view uh, stereo. Uh, uh, we have more than one view of the same scene. Uh, we, uh, cameras are taking images of the uh, scene uh, from different angles. And, uh, and uh, the resulting uh, images are analyzed to get the depth information from uh, video. Okay, so we looked at the stuff. We looked at why uh, we are studying stereo vision and uh, the basic principles of it. And later we looked at the mathematics of it, which was not that difficult. Maybe the, the derivation of the formulas is a little bit involved, but the final resulting stuff is very simple. The, uh, the matrix F, the fundamental matrix, um, is just uh, nine numbers. And given the given the image coordinates of the left image and right image, if, if, if two points correspond to each other, okay, between images of left and right, then they have to satisfy this equation. Left image point, uh, fundamental matrix multiplied by the right image point should be equal to zero. Uh, that's what we have arrived at. And later we said that if you have the point correspondences, eight point correspondences between two images, then you can recover these uh, nine parameters. You can uh, recover these nine parameters. Okay, tell me, th there are nine unknowns, but we say that eight equations are enough to find these nine unknowns. How could this ha how could how, how could this happen? Can anybody tell me why? We are saying that there are nine unknowns in a fundamental matrix, but we are saying that eight equations should be enough to find these numbers. Those matrix, matrixes uh, eight uh, degree of freedom like uh, on, uh, perfect, like in perfected projections. Yeah, actually there are there are not nine numbers in here. The, the number of numbers in here is, uh, is smaller actually. The degrees of freedom is smaller. Why? Because there is a zero here, okay? Let's say you found all the numbers. Let's say you found all the numbers of F. Okay, you tell me, you are telling me that, okay, these are my numbers. Then if I multiply all those numbers by two, I, I could say that whatever you found and multiply by two is the same thing. Why? Because if I multiply all these numbers by two, this zero equation zero should again work, okay? So I am multiplying this part with number K and this part with number K, doesn't matter, okay? So uh, you don't need nine uh, numbers uh, for these. And um, so that's good. So why do we need the uh, F? So why do we like this matrix F? What is the main function of matrix F? Um, this, I mean, if two points, this P corresponds to Q, yeah, it has to satisfy this, this is nice, but where do we use this equation in the stereo processing? Where do we use this equation? To calculate depth, uh, and we need to, uh, we need to line of uh, P and uh, P in other image, to calculate that. Yeah, we need the line, the corresponding epipolar line, right? For a P, for a P, if I have P, okay, I have P here. I don't know this Q, right? I know these numbers. If I multiply this P with these numbers, but I don't know that, I don't, I cannot get U prime and V prime, but I would get a line that can that, that u prime v prime can happen. So it's going to be a line like, a line like this, okay? On this line, you are going to make your search. That's the epipolar line, corresponding epipolar line. So this matrix F is good for us to give us the epipolar line and epipolar line, it makes our life a lot easier. Okay, so we looked at the open CV uh, offerings about the uh, stereo, these are all uh, uh, nice. And then I think we stopped at this point and today we will continue on this. 
Any questions about stereo from last week's lectures? Okay, from time to time I will ask you a question, then you are going to answer me maybe then, okay? So, uh, in this part of the stereo discussion, we are going to look at this. We like to find the depth of points from stereo images. It could be two images, three images, up to n images. There is no limit actually, okay? We are going to look at two things. The first one is, okay? Binocular fusion of features observed by two eyes. Okay, so what do we mean by that? We have two eyes or three eyes. We have two images, left image and right image. We are going to say this red point corresponds to this blue point. Okay, this is the fusion of features observed by the two eyes. This is one thing. Once I know these two points, we are going to recover the three-dimensional the three-dimensional P point in the real world that produces central projection and central projection that produces these two points. Okay, we are going to find the X, Y, Z of that P point. Okay, so we are going to look at the details of this. You might say that, yeah, well, we already did that, right? We, you might say that what was the equation of the disparity? We said that z is equal to f times, tell me, what is up, what is down? z and disparity are inverse to proportional or, or uh, proportional. If z goes up, d goes... So what are the two things that I'm going to put here? up and down, nominator and denominator. I am going to, where, where should I put D, disparity? Under this line or over this line? Under this line and uh, up, up this line, we have to uh, baseline. T. Baseline T, right? Okay, good. So D is there and uh, T is there. So the T is good. Um, uh, D is good. And when D increases, Z decreases. When D decreases, Z increases. And we know that, right? We know that. So that's good. Question for you. Okay, this uh, this is a good question. Well, I mean, I mean I, I, for me, it's a good question. I have a camera like this. Let me show you the top view. I have a camera like this use a, a little bit i have a camera like this okay there is a there is a point in the real world point p if i take the image of this point i would get okay this point here small p good if I rotate this, if I rotate this camera from the same center of projection, okay, if I rotate this camera from same center of projection to the left, now my camera is made, let, let me use a different color, maybe black. My camera is like this, okay. I rotated my camera to the right, okay, and um, now let's look at let's look at my new point again use the same color now this is q i have two images of the same scene okay uh, on the blue image my p corresponds to on the black image q right so let's try to let's try to see let's try to see um this equation z is equal to z is equal to f times t over d okay so i'm trying to find the, the z uh, what is p it looks like the p is this much right 
this is P and this is Q. So I find that Z is equal to let me ignore F. Let's take F as one because both cameras are the same. Z is equal to T over P minus Q. Good. Okay. What is T? What is the baseline? What is the difference between the the vector of difference between the left and right cameras? But the baseline is the same because we didn't uh, change baseline. So what is what is baseline then? What is the base? Baseline is zero. So what I have is it is zero over p minus q. So I am going to get whatever p minus q is. Zero over something is zero, right? So what am I doing wrong here? I have nice the, the this nice disparity between p and q. I have nice disparity between p and q, okay. But since baseline is zero, my equation is producing zero. So what am I doing wrong? I have the image of the same scene. It's like this, okay. So this is my image, right? You are are you looking at my image, my camera view, my face image? So if I rotate my camera like that, I am rotating my camera. The image changes. I have two images, but if I satisfy the correspondence between these two images, since the baseline is zero, I cannot get I cannot estimate the depth. But if I do this, if I move my camera left and right, okay, this is left, this is right. See, my perspective changes, right? Changes. It is. It is different. I I have a different baseline in that case. So what? So what am I doing here? If your images, the two images, have a baseline of zero, stereo doesn't work. So rotating the camera around its uh, central projection is not good for stereo. You cannot, you cannot rotate your eye like left, right, left, right, okay? And uh, uh, you cannot expect to get stereo depth out of the rotated cameras. Okay? You understand it? Say understand it, okay? Yes. So that, yes. that that's so the formulas tell you that also. Remember, how do you take the panorama of a scene? How do you do the panorama of a scene? Panorama of a scene. You take an image, you rotate your camera, you take another image, you rotate a camera, you take another image, right? So you are not creating any baseline when you take the panorama of a scene. If you are stitching images. You try to make no baseline. Baseline should stay zero. If you move your camera left and right, that is going to create parallax. And parallax is not good for your stitching because with the parallax, you will have occlusions between the objects. And if you have the occlusions, you cannot stitch them. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to our image that we like so much okay can you stitch these left and right images is it possible to stitch them the answer is no you cannot why i can find the correspondences yes i can find the correspondences hey, this point okay let me use the green this point corresponds to this point, this point, corresponds to this point, and I can come up with nine numbers, and that's good for a homography, but there is no homography between this image and this image. Why? Because there is no planar uh, relationship between them. For a, for, a, for a homography to happen, there should be a plane, okay? There should be a plane. And if we don't rotate, if we don't introduce any 
baseline if we don't introduce any left right up down movements of our camera between the two image uh, views you don't introduce any uh, uh, parallax in that case uh, there is a homography between them so there is no homography between these two images we cannot satisfy it maybe you can find uh, maybe you could find homography between this part of the image and uh, this part of the image why tell me why there is a homography between these two green rectangles there is no occlusion in this part of the image. Yeah, that's true, but there is, there, there is something more than that. And the same thing is valid here. I could find, it is possible to find the homography between this part of the image and this part of the image. There is a homography between these two. Because of this, this is like a, a planar space? Yeah, that's, that's because it is plane. This is a plane and this is another plane. There is a homography between the planes. Again, there is a this is almost a plane and almost a plane. There is a homography, but the overall picture is not a plane. Okay, so there is no homography between these two, and you cannot stitch these kind of images. For stitching, you need the rotation about the center of projection of your cameras. Okay, good. So let's go back to, let's go back to. Uh, I have a question. Sure. sure. Uh, uh, can we say that uh, if we, if we found, if we find a homography, uh, they image, uh, cameras or image, uh, um, center of projection should uh, have same. Should be same, yeah. If you, same. yeah, if you, if you, yeah, that's 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 a good way of looking at it. If you have two images, and if you can find perfect enough, good enough homography between these two images, then that means that, that means that, uh, either your images are planar, okay, you are taking your images from a plane, or uh, if they are not from a plane, then that means that your central projections are the same. Okay, there are two possibilities. If, if your image is coming from a planar surface, okay, then uh, your central projection might be different. Okay, your central projection might be different. But if your images are coming from different planes, then that means that if there's a homography, then that means that um, that means that. Uh, uh, your center of projections are the same. Let me try to find the first. Where is where is where are my slides? Let me go to my slides. Let me try to find that. Maybe that, yeah, that's a good opportunity for me to teach you something again. Uh, open this one. I think we talked about the homographies in this chapter at the beginning of the semester. Let me find it. Remember, I had a picture when we talk about the um, homogeneous coordinates. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, this is this one. Okay, good. This is the same thing that I try that I try to draw uh, uh, with two images. Remember. Image one and image two is produced by two different cameras, but these two different cameras have the same central projection. The only difference is that the camera is rotated a little bit to the right. So there is a there is a correspondence between this point x and x prime. Okay, x and x prime. But using those correspondences you cannot get estimate the depth of x why because you are you are um you are uh, using the same you are using the same uh, central projection and there's a homography between image one and image two okay 
Also, we said that there is an homography between image 1 and image 2. Why? Because we are taking the image of a planar object. Okay, this is a plane. Here, x and x prime correspond to each other. Okay, and there is an homography here. And I can satisfy the homography, but since in this case the baseline is greater than 0, we, can, we could run our stereo, we could run our stereo um, uh, algorithms on this, on this image. So I've got the, the answer to your question. If you can satisfy an homography between two images, it is either this or that. In this case, you cannot do stereo. In this case, you could. But this is a very rare case, right? I mean, how could this happen? Well, maybe you, this could happen if you are taking the picture of a soccer field, right? If you are taking a picture of a soccer field, maybe this could happen. Or if you are looking, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, the 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 observation satellites, observation satellites that orbit the Earth very very fast, since they are far away from the Earth, sometimes they model the Earth's surface as a plane. Okay, so. This is our Earth. This is, I cannot draw it here now. Um, this is our Earth. Okay. This is my satellite. Looking at Earth like this, this is the camera. So I say that, okay, there is a plane here. There is a, let me try to make the curvature of the Earth like even bigger like that. Okay. So there is a plane here. And if I move the satellite like that, and if I take the image of the same place, same blue plane, so I have a stereo pair, right? And there is a homography between these two, and I have a stereo pair, okay? So the observation satellites, actually, they work this way, okay? Uh, whenever they, try, when as soon as they see Turkey from up, they take a picture and immediately they start rotating, okay? They take the picture like this and immediately after that taking the picture they start rotating and when they reach that side, okay? They take the same picture and they create stereo. And when they stitch images, when they stitch images, um, they use the uh, homographies. I think let me try to somebody sent me something yesterday um, where is it um, somebody sent it to me okay here it is this is directly from the Turkish satellites Trying to zoom in. How do I zoom? Okay, here's, here it is. So as you see, you are going to see the, you are going to see the patterns. Okay, you see the patterns, right? There are these diagonal lines. So the satellite is moving that way. Diagonally, and I don't, I don't see the stitching points in this diagonal but I see the stitching points here why do you think that I am seeing the stitching points between these two but otherwise I don't see the stitch I don't see the stitching marks in this direction but I see it here uh, I guess uh, we suppose that uh, our earth uh, planner but uh, in the real it's not planar. No, that's not it. No, Maybe. no, no. The the satellite moves this way. Okay, it moves this way. So when it takes images, the time difference between two images are very close. So when you stitch them, the the sun's angle, the season, the surface uh, uh, conditions are almost the same. Even the clouds are the same. This image is taken at a different time. Okay.
That's why you see these bond bandings. Where did it go? What happened? This is this this interface is not nice. So this is this is directly from the Turkish satellites. I forgot the name of this this satellite. Maybe I maybe they are where is maybe they are using more than one satellite to produce these images. Oh, it is looking at Kyrgyzstan. Okay, so and they are not. They are not releasing any information about the other parts of the. Other parts of the world, they have it, but they don't release it. Okay, so uh, homography is something that you use to establish maybe correspondence between the uh, satellite images. Okay, good. So that was a good question, Efkan. Thank you. Uh, if there are no questions, then I will continue. So our task is now finding the correspondences. We always said that we know that this P, point P corresponds to point Q. But how do we find the correspondences? You might say that, okay, we already did that. How did we do that? Okay, uh, we, did, we, 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 we do that. Just run uh, surf on this image and run surf on this image sift surf or doesn't matter okay and get the uh, key points and their descriptors match the descriptors so you will have uh, maybe 200 descriptors here 230 descriptors here uh, use your brute force or flan matcher between these two images and now you are going to have maybe 150 correspondences okay using our formula z is equal to f times t over d okay you know d you assume a t if you, if you are given you use it and you can get a z value but that's going to give you only 150 uh, depth values for this whole image i want more i want to have a disparate image like that okay i like to find the disparities or the depths of each point in the image if possible not just 150 there are 10,000 points on this one 10,000 pixels and i like to find 10,000 10, depth measurements from this image so how do i how am i going to do that so for that for that problem to to be solved i need to find a way of saying that okay i pick a point here okay my point is this one red what is the corresponding point on the other image it looks like it is this one as a human being i can do this very easily but then for a computer to do this we need to be careful a little bit i mean for me it is easy to say that okay this blue point here corresponds to this blue point yeah that's very easy but Finding the corresponding point for this one in the other image is not that easy. I need to count the I need to count the bricks or I need to do the kind of stuff. I think looking at the distance between these two, maybe around here, not perfectly sure, but maybe yeah, these two uh, uh, green points uh, correspond to each other. Okay, so that's our problem. For any point, for any point. On the image I like to find the corresponding image on the other one of course we, we you could say that okay take this take this um, okay take this uh, pixel single pixel okay take this single pixel this one its pixel value is very dark maybe 55 okay and first do this first First, find the epipolar line. This is the epipolar line for that. It doesn't look like a line. Let me try to draw a line. It is it is more like a line. So this uh, green line is the epipolar line. I will make a search on it. Okay. Uh, if I try to find the same pixel value on that line. Is this a good idea? I mean, if this is 55, 
find a pixel on that line that has a value of 55. Is this a good idea? I think that's not good. Not good idea. I think. That's not a good idea. I mean, if it's not a good idea. It is not good. The from the. I mean, you understand that it's not good from the way I ask it. Uh, why it is not good? Because I mean, yeah, my left camera and right camera doesn't have to produce exact same pixel value, right? Even if I use the same camera, there is the problem of noise. Okay. Noise will change. I, if I take the two pictures of the same image, same scene, sometimes I will get 55 for this one, sometimes I will get 57. So I don't know. That's that's one thing. You will not get exact same pixel value for the same position. The second one is that, okay, by coincidence, there are many pixels with a value of 55 on this line. So that's not a, that's not a good idea to compare pixels to pixels but it might be a good idea to compare neighborhoods so I'll take this neighborhood of seven by seven window and compare it compare it all the windows on this line around this line let's say there are 100 columns here and 100 rows okay for all the 100 uh, columns i will make i will compare these two i will compare these two uh, windows okay i will compare these two windows so that's the idea and we are going to come to this one when we find the correspondences after finding the correspondences okay and as the uh, the, as the previous slide said the reconstruction of their three-dimensional uh, pre-images needs to be found so how am i going to find it let's say i found the correspondence using this kind of idea and i'm going to do the reconstruction okay i mean in the ideal world if i know that <coughs> if i know that point p okay no if I know that point Q corresponds to point Q prime, in the ideal world, if I draw these two lines, the blue line and the red line, they will intersect at this point in the real world point Q, and that would be my answer. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen because my correspondence is not perfect. I cannot find exact correspondence because I am limited with the uh, pixel uh, precision, right? I cannot say this pixel, half of this pixel matches the half of the other one. So there will be problems. There will be problems with my calibration and there will be problems, other problems related to noise. So what I will end up is I will end up with this, I will say that this P here, this P corresponds to this P prime. And if I draw this P line, I am drawing the P line here. And I am drawing the P prime line here. And since these are two three-dimensional lines in three-dimensional space, they don't have to intersect. They don't intersect. So what am I going to do? The idea is this. If they don't intersect, if these two lines don't intersect, maybe I should find the closest, uh, uh, sh shortest line that connects these two lines. Find the shortest line that connects these two lines and the center point of that line segment is my p point point p that's what we are going to do right now okay these are all cameras they need calibration human made stuff there is no perfect 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 measurement okay uh, and calibration makes errors there is noise there is optical distortion problems uh, whatever you name it 
you will not have any intersecting lines. You will not have any intersecting lines between two between two three-dimensional uh, lines. So what are we going to do? Find the shortest line segment that connects these two lines. And the center point on that line segment is going to be our answer. So by definition, what kind of line connects these two? Of course, it is it has to be perpendicular to both of these lines, right? Left and right, okay? So it has to be perpendicular. I have two lines. And this black line segment has to be perpendicular to both of them. If I, if I have a line formula for the red one, and if I have a line formula for the blue one, how do you get the direction of the black one? I think uh, if we uh, cross product two lines, uh, we have uh, we have we, we will have a vector that uh, exactly exactly exactly. If you have two lines, if you take the cross product of those two lines, you will get a line that is perpendicular to both of those lines. Remember that's what we did with the stereo at the beginning of the chapter somewhere i don't know where it was let me go try to go back and find it what did we do with the epipolar geo epipolar geometry somewhere where is my epipolar geometry yeah here it is okay we said that okay this o p and o prime makes a plane if i if i okay if i Raise these. Okay, if I uh, take this line, this line, and if I take the other line here, if I take the cross product of both of those lines, I will get a new line direction that is perpendicular to this plane. It will be perpendicular to both of those, both of those lines. That's what we are going to. That's what we are going to do here. Okay. Can I to, ask about the noise? To, to get the to get the direction for this uh, black mm -hmm. segment. Of course, you could ask a question. Oh, okay. You can hear me. Uh, I was talking previously, uh, but um, uh, when we know the how the camera is uh, rotated, for example. Yeah. Uh, it always rotates. Yeah. Uh, Three sixty degrees. Uh, so, uh, should we still find, need to find? Uh, descriptor values because uh, we can just teach uh, the start to the end right and then well i don't understand what you say you where, where, where did you get that number 360 degrees uh, and it, uh, it, it, it's random like uh, a rotating camera for example you mean uh, the, a, a camera rotating around the center of projection yes Image yeah. Taken well, the, well, if the if there is no common field of view between two camera views, then there is no stitching, right? You cannot stitch them because there is no overlapping path. Of course, you need the overla overlapping part. Without the overlapping part, you cannot do mm -hmm. the stitching or stereo uh, co correspondence. Um, well, what if uh, there is, for example, uh, uh, I'm, I'm saying that the photos are taken periodically when rotating, like. Uh, ah, you mean you mean scattered. the you mean the rotation amount. <coughs> you you mean you know the rotation amount. Yes. You know the camera parameters. Well, in that case, yeah, you could because basically what you are doing is, I mean, if you are rotating your camera like 360 degrees in any 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 direction like the left, right, or up, down, or whatever, okay? So, basically what you are doing is you are taking a picture of the inner part of a sphere. That's what you are doing, right? By doing that. Yes. You are taking the picture of the inner part of the sphere, and if you know your angle, you know what part of the sphere you are taking the picture of. 
Uh, whatever you are picture taking, you just paste it in the inner part of the sphere, and that's going to that's going to be it. Okay. When we do the stitching, regular stitching, we don't assume that we know the we don't assume that we know the rotation amount. We don't know. Okay. All we have is that I did not move the central projection of the camera, and I took these two images and they overlap. So we establish our uh, homography and we do the stitching between them. The exam, I assume that uh, we know the rotation angle. I don't remember the exam question, but I don't think that in the exam... There was lighting image stitching. Yeah, how, okay, you assume that you know the angle, right? Okay. Yes. No, I expected you to find the homography and do the stitching, etc. Okay. okay, so let's do yeah. the... Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, in ideal world, uh, the, these two lines will intersect in a point. Yeah. And, uh, uh, to find the point, we we should calculate the cross product of these two lines. Uh, yeah. But in in not ideal world, uh, we will have a uh, another line uh, perpendicular to both of them, and we should also get the uh, cross product of these two lines. In homogeneous coordinate system, uh, we, we, are, we represent uh, line and point uh, as same. So how can we know we will find a point or a line? That's your interpretation, right? Whatever you get is, can be interpreted as a line or point. If you treat it as a point, it's a point, otherwise it's a line. So, the, I mean, the solution that I'm going to give you is going to be valid for both ideal world and the real world. Okay? If it is the ideal world, okay, I can still get, okay, I can still multiply, uh, cross product these two, this one and this one, right? If I take the cross product of this one, I get a perpendicular line direction. Okay? In that line direction, and there will be a there will be a connecting connecting small segment in there, but the length of small segment is going to be zero. So the solution is valid for both for both of them. Let me let me show you the formulation that I'm going to derive, and you will be uh, you will you will understand why it doesn't make any difference okay so let's try to let's try to write the line formulas in 3d in three dimensional i think we did not write, write any line formulas in three dimensions we all we we only wrote, wrote line formulas in three dimensions it is, it is actually a little bit difficult to write line formulas in three dimensions right so what is this line okay what is this ax plus b y equals to c this is a line in two dimensions right how about this one a x plus b y plus c z equals to d what is this it's yeah it's a plane in three-dimensional world it's not a line in so this is a line in two-dimensional world. This is a plane in three-dimensional world. Okay, line 2D. This is a plane 3D. So how do you represent a line in how do you represent a line in two three-dimensional world? Okay. This is what we are going to uh, this is what we are going to do. I know that I know that if i am if i am using the if i am using the okay let's look at this one if i am using if i am using the left image coordinate system le left camera coordinate system sorry this is point zero 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 right and this is point pl is that really right okay this point pl so Take PL is a, I am not using the uh, uh, homogeneous coordinate system. I am using the, uh, I am using non-homogeneous coordinate system. But these, these formulas could be derived for the homogeneous coordinate system too. 
PL is a three-dimensional point, right? Uh, its uh, values are uh, already known, and PL is a three-dimensional point. How about this one? A times PL. So PL has X, Y, and Z. PL has X, Y, and Z uh, components. A is a free parameter. Look at this one. If A is 0, what happens with this one? If A is 0, this would produce what? This would produce 0, 0, 0, right? So this would produce this point, O, L, right? Let's say our PL is uh, X, Y, and Z. Okay. If A is 0, A times, A is a sc scalar, by the way, a real number. A times PL is going to produce 0, 0, 0. What happens if A is 1, then it will produce what? If A is 1, A times PL is X, Y, and Z, right? So it's this one. How about A is 0 0.5? So if A is 0, I will, I will produce this point. If A is 1, I will produce this point. If A is 0 0.5, I will produce this one. If A is 10, I will produce this one. It goes like that. So this is a line formula, actually. Parameter, parameterized by A. If I keep changing A, I will get a point on this red line. Okay, so I found a line formula for 3D world. Right? A times PL, that's it. A is a, A is a, um, A is a parameter, line parameter. So parameterized version of a line. I could do the same thing for this yellow line. Maybe I should be careful here because the image coordinate system of all uh, right camera and left camera is different. So this is zero, zero, zero here for this camera. But for this camera, it's not zero, zero, zero. This camera here is different in terms of this baseline. Also, there is a rotation between them. So I will rotate all the points by R and plus T so that I can be in this coordinate system. Okay? I can be in this coordinate system. So I'm going to write something like this. This is what I'm going to do. I will say that I know this vector. I know this uh, baseline. I can write this. If I add this baseline with this vector, I will come here. And if I add that uh, small segment, I would be here. Then if I have come back here, that will be zero. So if I add these two vectors with each other, I, will sh I should get a zero. So that's the relationship. If I have that relationship, then I could find, I could find this small point here, P, and this small point here, Q. If you can find P and Q, the, the middle point between these two is the answer that I'm looking for. Okay? So it's going to be just one simple line of formula, and once I solve that formula, I will get my results. Okay, that's it. But it looks like I am out of time. I will. I will take ten minutes of break. Let's be here around uh, thirty-three, and we will continue afterwards.
Okay, uh, so this is what we're going to do, and uh, line formula is here in three dimensions, as I said, uh, representing lines in three dimensions is a little bit, is a little bit uh, tricky, uh, but this one works, and uh, we are going to see uh, how the complete formulation is going to develop. So I think finding this vector is e easy, but as we said, this is OR000, but I need to rotate this point and add this baseline on all the points in this coordinate system. After that, everything should be clear. So this is what we do. Okay, this is triangulation algorithm. APL, A is a real number, okay. A is a real number. Uh, is a line, is a ray through uh, OL. When A is zero, it is OL. When A is one, it is PL. Okay, if I rotate this PR by R, the rotation matrix between left and right cameras, and multiply it with B, so it is going to be P, P, B, P, R, and add T, the baseline between these two cameras, then this would be the line formula for my, for my yellow line. <coughs> okay, so this is the yellow line. And this is the, this is the, this is the purple line, whatever it is, okay. So, I have the formulas for the left line and the right line. And <coughs> PL cross product RT PR, okay. Uh, RT PR is the rotated version of PR. I didn't add the T because I don't have the, the important thing. Here is the uh, the direction. If I cross product this these two uh, uh, lines, then I would get I would get the direction for this black line segment W. So in this case, it's going to be. W. So W is my uh, line direction. It is orthogonal to both L and R. Okay. L and R. And <coughs> I know that W is the W is the um, W is the uh, direction of the direction of the line. I know that, but I need to multiply it with some stuff. Okay, it's going to come in a few minutes. So this is our complete, this is our complete formulation. APL minus B times RTPR, okay, and plus T, the, we, had a, we had a plus T, so they put the T at the other side, times C, uh, C, C is the uh, 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 parameter for the line of W. PL times cross product RT PR. Then this is what I get T. Remember, mm. this one comes from this is minus PR RT PR plus T. So T comes there and it is here. Okay. If C is uh, zero, uh, they will intersect, right? In exactly. If if C is zero, they will intersect. Okay. If C is zero, they will intersect. What are A and B? A and B. A A is this number here. B is this number here. So, A P L. If I find the correct A, A will be the, APL will be this point, B, P, R will be that point. Okay, in that case, in that case, if two of them intersect perfectly, C would be zero. Okay, C would be zero. So how many unknowns are there? How many unknowns in this formula? I know the, this is a calibrated system. I know the baseline, use a different color. 
I know the baseline. I know the rotation matrix between these two. Of course, I know PL, PR because I know the correspondences. This is after establishing the correspondences. I don't know these three numbers, A, B, and C. <coughs> so I have only a single equation, but three unknowns. How, how could this happen? How am I going to find it? I think uh, with the points, uh, we have three dimensions, so we can make it. Exactly. Let's let's try to write it. Exactly. This is A, this is XL, YL, ZL, right? Plus B, this rotation matrix, I know all of them. And <coughs> PR, this is XR. Y R and Z R and plus C as you see as C times C times there is this P L X L Y L Z L cross product something okay is I can write it in terms of in terms of uh, matrix production whatever at the end, in the otherwise, it is Tx, Ty, and Tz. As you see, the top part is an equation. The center part about y is going to be another equation. And the bottom part, z, is going to be another equation. Three equations and three unknowns, and I can solve this. Three equations and three unknowns, I can solve this. Knowing A and B will be enough. Okay? So I, I will find A, I will find B, and I will calculate this APL and BPR, and uh, find the center point, and that will be it. That will be it. So do, we like this solution. <coughs> closed, for so, closed form solution. This is nice, good, and it is tolerant uh, um, with respect to image noise calibration errors and etc okay so a good solution but you know the question what is the problem with the solution the solution is nice but there is a problem it cannot do something <coughs> I think it, it works for only two points it uh, works only for, for two for views two. right what is the definition of stereo more than one view of the same scene? How about this? I have another camera here. I took the image of this point P. Okay. A third one. So what am I going to do? I mean, I was talking about the intersection of the lines and you could say that why do we need the third? Why do we need the third view? I mean, two views are good enough. So why do we need the third view then? Maybe I should ask you this. If two views are enough to find these correspondences, why do we need the third view or fourth view or fifth view or the hundredth view? To obtain a uh, relation between uh, the views, I think. Uh, well, I mean, the, why, why are we establishing relationship between the views? We are establishing so that we can get estimate the uh, XYZ of P, right? If I can get the yes. XYZ of P from two views, why do I need the third view? And maybe uh, to increase accuracy of our system. Exactly. If wh what did we say? Why why did we say that these two rays are not intersecting? They are not intersecting because because of the noise, because of the error. Okay, so th th there is definitely, we don't like this actually, they are not intersect, the fact that they don't intersect. So, if we have only two views, we don't have that much information about the noise, no noise part or the calibration part. So, if we have three views, we are going to have a, a noise again. They will not intersect, but we will have more information. And using that information, maybe 
we can do better okay we can do better so let's get five views ten views hundred views and try to estimate the depth from these hundred views okay and sometimes you know the problem of occlusion right sometimes for some points i cannot see i see it from the left image but i cannot see it from the right so what does that mean i cannot get the depth between these two camera pairs but if i have more pairs maybe that point is occluded from one of the uh, cameras but it will be okay it will not be occluded from the other parts that's why <clears throat> that's why we say that let's try to get as many views as we like and use all that information to make a better estimate but this solution doesn't work very well with that one because this one tries to establish a loop between O, L, O, R, and P, like triangulation. And I solve it using just two views. So what are we going to do? We are going to do some linear algebra stuff. Don't get scared, it is easy. So we are going to go back to our projection. Okay, remember our projection matrix? If I multiply this point P with the projection matrix, I get this point P. And projection matrix is this, right? K is a 3 by 3 matrix, inter intrinsic parameters. R is a 3 by 3 matrix of um, <coughs> rotation matrix uh, of that camera, single camera. That is a translation vector, okay, between the camera coordinate system and the real, real world coordinate system, okay. So if I have the projection matrices for all the cameras, M1, M2, M3, M5, etc., okay. If I have all the projection matrices, all the projection matrices uh, for all the uh, cameras, maybe I can write a one big linear system. And when I saw that linear system, I can get a better estimate of P. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to uh, do. Okay. So reconstruction using uh, this linear system. That's what I'm going to do. So this, I know this, uh, can I do, yeah, okay, do, okay, good. So P is equal to M1 P, okay, this is first image. P prime is equal to, maybe I should use just M and M prime, M prime P. Okay, so what is common between these two? What is common between these two? This point X, Y, Z point, the three-dimensional point is common. I know this one is equal to this one, right? This is a vector and this is a vector. If I multiply, uh, do, you do you guys remember this one? If I cross product, if I take a cross product of the same vector, what would I get? It's a, it's a zero. Yeah. Um, okay. It says zero if I take the cross product of uh, same thing. So if I take okay. if I if I take the if I take the cross product of this P and this M times P, I know this one, I know this one, I don't know this one. Okay. If I take the cross product of P times M P should be zero. P prime times M prime P should be zero, right? Both of them are zero. So instead of taking the cross product in the usual way, I am going to use the skew symmetric, skew symmetric matrix, skew symmetric uh, matrix representation of this P, and do a do a matrix multiplication. Okay. Well, if I do this matrix multiplication. So this is a three by three matrix. This is a three by four matrix. Again, three by four matrix. And if I put them one after the other, so what is the size of this whole thing? So this is three by three. And this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Three by four 
if I multiply this one, I am going to end up with 3 by 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. This is Px times m, 3 by 4. This is 3 by 4 too, if I put it underneath. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Okay, and now I have my P. What is, what is the size of P? P is, in the homogeneous coordinate system, is a four-dimensional X, Y, Z, 1 equal to zero so this is a four by <coughs> eight matrix okay and this is a four dimensional vector and i'll know all the numbers here i know there's a zero here and i know i don't know this xyz values okay so i solve this linear equation I solve this linear equation, it is going to give me this x, y, z value, right? So, so far, so good, but what did I solve? Did I, I didn't solve anything new. I have only two views, right? I have only two views. <coughs> and using these two views, uh, without paying any attention to whether they, they inter the light rays intersect or not, I solve these equations and I get the x, y, z values. But our purpose was to, was to get a better uh, estimate of the P using more than two views. So what am I going to do? This is what am I going to do? P 2 prime cross product M 2 prime P is equal to zero. Right? So I just simply put another four lines uh, of uh, uh, four lines under this uh, uh, four by eight matrix. So it's going to be four by twelve matrix. Again, this one will be four-dimensional, four-dimensional uh, vectors, and I'm going to solve that one. Doesn't matter how many cameras you have, as long as you have the, as long as have you have, you have the projection matrix of projection matrix of that projection matrix of that uh, camera and the corresponding point in that uh, image, I should be fine. Right, I should be fine. So uh, this is a nice generalization, algebraic generalization of that geometric solution, and this can handle many, many uh, cameras at the same time. Okay, good. Any questions? Um, uh, in this setting, uh, the more uh, points we uh, put, uh, the the solution might be uh, an exact solution right uh, well I, I there is no exact solutions but we would assume that this is the this is the better better path this is the better solution because you are using more information uh, no I, I was talking about the equations uh, so we will uh, have to oh yeah yeah well I mean this is an over constraint linear system right you have three four mm -hmm. unknowns but you have four unknowns but uh, you are adding you are adding uh, uh, first eight equations now 12 equations and 16 equations right so you have much more information than you don't you don't need exactly for an exact solution so this is going to be a least square sense of solution so you are trying to minimize the error when you get your x, y, z results, put them back in, you won't get exact zeros because you have noise, right? You have error. So if everything, all the cameras are perfect, you establish your correspondence perfectly, you solve this equation and you put x, y, z back into this system, you should get a zero back, but no, you won't get anything. You won't get anything like exact zero. It will be close to zero, but it won't be exactly zero. Okay. okay, so OpenCV kind of helps us doing this triangular triangulate points. There is a function named triangular points. It takes projection matrix of one camera and projection matrix of the second camera 
and the projection points of the first camera and the second one and these are the four dimensional XYZ values or the corresponding to projected points. Why are they four dimensional? Four dimensional because they are in homogeneous coordinate system. Okay. So this one solves these equations using this two matrices only. How do I generalize to three matrices? If I maybe I can solve it with the pairs of matrices and take the yeah do you, do you know what i'm saying if you have three if you have three cameras triangulate with two cameras and the other two cameras and the other camera there are three possibilities and get the outputs and get the outputs and maybe take the average of it might be a solution okay so but but the, the point here is that if you have the projection matrices uh, of each camera then OpenCV will help you to find the to find the estimated points using this formulation good I think this function is a little bit generalized right because it, it says two times two by n <coughs> so, uh, I think projection n. points are two by n Array of feature points in the first image. Well, I mean, you have two cameras. Two by n mm. is um, two by n. There are n points from the first camera and n points in the second camera. Uh, okay, okay, maybe we can go. Can I go? Can I click on it? Can I click on? No. Well, I was trying to. Okay, open CV. Let's 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 go there. Maybe there is an overload. Maybe there is an overload that will take more than. Open CV and triangle. Okay, triangulate points. Documentation is here. <laughs> Projection. I think, uh, this one, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't talk about any overloads. It uses but the. I think this one is it uh, because it takes uh, array for array and it takes projection matrices. Uh, Oh, okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Okay. I didn't, yeah, that's a good. Yeah. So, there's a new one. I didn't see this one. So, it takes many matrices, right? It takes uh, the the two three points for each matrices, and it outputs these. So there is no limit. Internet uses DLT method. Ninety four. Which one is this? Anyway, so you you look at this, you look at the documentation later. Okay, good. So we know it. Um, there is a process called rectification, which makes our correspondence establishment a lot easier. Remember what we said? We said that uh, before we, I started here. I mean, to be able to find the corresponding point to this one, I need to make a search on this green line, right? On this green line. But for by coincidence, for some reason, this green line is a perfect horizontal line, and this green line uh, is the same row, is the same row uh, as the row of this point. So, uh, in fact, in this image, wherever you look at it, okay. Let's say if you try to find the corresponding point for this red point. Okay, I know it is here, but it's going to be on this line. So, for some reason, by pure luck, whatever point, whatever line you are looking for on the right image, it will be the same row, and our lines will not be slanted like this, right? It will be perfectly horizontal lines. 
So is this coincidence? No. This process is called rectification. Okay, this process is called rectification. And rectification makes our life a lot easier. So in a rectified stereo pair, epipolar lines are parallel and they are in the same row of the image. Okay, rectified images are like, are like that. And all the images that I showed you before, okay, like this one is rectified. This one is rectified too. Okay. They are rectified not because their cameras are very carefully placed uh, towards the scene. They are rectified because these images are modified later after the images are taken. So you rectified your images so your scan lines become parallel okay to each other and they are horizontal parallel and horizontal in that case your search will be very 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 fast why because to be able to find the corresponding point for this red dot go to the other go to the other image okay and uh, in the other image go to the same line of the image and make your search on that line so i am not using f in any way right F is used for calculating the rectified images, estimating the rectified images. After images are rectified, I don't use F at all. My epipolar line is already red there. So let's talk about this rectification. Okay. Rectification, okay, is... Um, Rectification is uh, is equivalent to with two images having a common image plane parallel to the baseline joining the two optical centers. Okay, and the rectification process can be implemented virtually using virtual images, and later you present your images to the user. This is an example. Okay, my rear cameras are. The cameras that I am marking with red lines. This is my real camera and real camera. So they are looking at each other. For I right, come on, what kind of rectangle? Is, okay, my cam, my real cameras are black ones. Okay, <laughs> why am I trying to trace it again? My real cameras are the black ones. But I don't like them. Why? Because the epipolar lines are not parallel. Okay, I need to use F to calculate the epipolar line in the other image. I like to have cameras that now I may if I make it uh, larger. Okay. Okay, I like to have a camera, right camera like that, and left camera like that. Okay, if I have two cameras like those, their epipolar lines are parallel and horizontal. And that would be perfect. So how am I going to do that? So it, it is not that difficult. If you know the R matrix and the T uh, vector between these two cameras, it, it, can be, it can be done and there is a procedure for it. And the nice thing is that once you know the geometry of this green camera, you know that if I let's say this point P if I take this line from point P it's going to intersect another one in the green uh, uh, image so I know that I know that this red dot will correspond to this will correspond to this green dot on the green image okay so I can transfer all the pixel information to this green image and I will get the rectification done. I will get the rectification done. Once this is done, it looks like this. Okay. My real cameras are this pi and pi prime. My rectified camera is like a very large camera. So the same, same image plane is holding both of those cameras. It is pi bar. Okay, so here's one example. 
Real images, left image and right image. As you see, I established correspondence between these two. I obtained my uh, F. And for each, for a given point, for a given point, I can establish the, uh, for a given point, I can establish the epipolar line in the other image. So it looks like, let's say for this, for this red dot on the left image, it looks like the epipolar line is something like that. It is not definitely parallel. It's not definitely parallel. After the rectification process, like I did, like that, okay? After the rectification process, images become like that. Okay, left image and right image become like that. As you see, the corresponding point for this point will be on the same line like that and the corresponding point for this red one will be on the image like that and see this part of the image it's all black because in the in the new virtual image i may not i may not have any corresponding part let's go back there and see as you see if I try to if I try to find a point here, there is no corresponding point in the red in the in the black image. So it will be black. And some part of this image will not be in the green, right? So some part of the image will be wasted. But at the end, if you are careful with the setup, your stereo setup, if you are uh, careful about the stereo setup your rectification images will come back nice like this and it will be all usable so in fact all the images that i showed you up to now they are all rectified images that's why when you do when you try to establish the correspondence all you do is go to the other image and we get the same line so you don't you don't use the f the matrix f at all when you're doing the correspondence establishment Okay, any questions so far? Uh, to find the epipolar line, don't they already need to find the line correspondence? To find the epipolar lines, no. I mean, if the images that you have are rectified, you don't have to find the epipolar lines. The epipolar line is already in the same image, in the other image, the same row, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. And you don't have to make any calculations. And the nice thing is that you write a simple loop. The loop starts from the first column of the same row to the last one, and you do your calculations. You don't look at any other rows, a single row. So it's going to be efficient in terms of cache usage. It, it will be efficient in terms of not calculating a, a analytic line. Good, okay. If are there any questions with the rectification? Rectification is not coincidence, okay? It can be calculated for any stereo periods as long as as long as you know the rotation matrix between the cameras. How does the open C V help you with the um, open C V rectification? Yeah, there is a stereo rectify function. Let's see what, what it needs. It needs the media projection matrices. Stereo rectify. Here it is. Let me try to click on it. I cannot for some reason. Is it working? Yeah, okay. So it takes the camera matrix, intrinsic parameters, distortion coefficients of the lens, second camera matrix, 
Okay. Image size. Input array R and T, output array R and T, output array. So it is producing left and right image. Okay, I don't know why it is producing so many of the images. So there is, okay, what is, okay, this is the rotation matrix, okay. The rotation matrix from the coordinates of the first came to the second one. So these are the intrinsic parameters and the distortion coefficients between for two images. This is the rotation matrix and the, uh, the translation vector. And so R1, R2, P1, R1 and R2 are the rectification transforms. So you are supposed to calculate these transforms from somewhere else and it is oh no no it is giving you these output okay it is giving you these transform the rotation transform from first to second from second to first and projection matrix of the near coordinate system so that you can carry them out okay Stereo rectify and calibrated points points. Okay, this is directly giving you the rectification information from the point correspondences and F. So there is lots of help from OpenCV to do the rectification. If you have the rectification, then it will help you to create the new images too. Good. Okay, if there are no questions, I will continue with some new topic. This is a, okay, the, the 3D reconstruction problem. So far, we assume that, so far, we assume that we know the projection matrices, we know the R uh, uh, rotation matrix between the left and right camera, we know the translation vector and everything, right? That's what we have assumed. Um, what if we don't know some of them okay let's look at this problem if both intrinsic and extrinsic are known so it is perfect i can put everything in it i can get the xyz's remember those m times p is equal to p stuff okay if you if you know these then then we are all fine Okay, I can calculate the X, Y, Z of all the points. Okay, what if I don't know the extrinsic parameters, that is the, the rotation matrix and the translation vector, but I know the intrinsic ones. Okay, I know the intrinsic ones. Okay, if I know only the intrinsic ones, you can also, re okay, I mean, nobody is going to prevent you from calculating the F matrix, right? F. P1, P2 is zero, right? Nobody, nobody, nobody will stop you from doing this. I can establish my correspondence. After the correspondence, you can run your uh, 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 calculations and you can recover the X, Y, Z of your uh, real world points. But recovery structure uh, and extrinsic up to an unknown scale factor. So. You are going to recover both the X, Y, Z and the extrinsic parameters also. Up to an unknown scaling factor. So if somebody say that the, the point P will be at this point 3, 5, 7, you will say that, okay, this is what you are guessing, but if I multiply with this K, this will be another, this will be another solution too. Okay. So if you know only the intrinsic parameters, there is a way to recover the X, Y, Z's of all the real scenes, okay, up to a scale factor. Also, the same is valid for the extrinsic parameters too, okay? The same is valid for the extrinsic parameters too, if only the intrinsics are known. Okay, good. Uh, what happens if you don't know anything? Okay, I only know the correspondences. Again, you can get the F, 
no problem. To recover your real world points, to recover your real points, you can do some stuff, but this time reconstruction will not be an up to an uh, uh, scaling factor. It will be up to an unknown global projective transformation. Okay. Now, previously, I, I give you a number, like I give you a point in the real world, 3, 3, 3 comma 5, comma 7, and I multiply it with K, and I will say this is my solution too, because I don't know the exact scale. Now, if somebody gives me a, a point P, I need to multiply it with a perspective projection matrix M, 3 by 4 matrix M, and I'm going to say that, okay, this might be your solution too. So there is a there is a loss of three parameter moving on with only correspondences. Okay. So those are the three things about what is going to happen if I don't know some stuff. If you know everything, all the parameters, then uh, then uh, you can calculate the x y z's of the real world points exactly. But if you know only the intrinsics, then there is a scaling factor going on. If you don't know anything, just the correspondences, then <clears throat> you can find the solutions, but those solutions are up to an unknown global projective transformation. Okay, any, any questions on this slide? Any questions on this slide? So these are good, good information, just remember this, and it will be helpful somewhere. We said that humans use the stereo system, their two eyes, left and right eyes, but their eyes, their camera structure is a little bit different. Why? Because we can move our left and right eyes independently. Well, not independent, not that independent. For example, I can, I can make my eyes parallel to each other when I look at far distant objects objects but if I try to look at my finger very very close by I had to cross my eyes right my eyes crossed and that hurt my eyes that's not good but I cannot do this I cannot look at I cannot look uh, from my left I uh, look at my left finger from to from my right I look at my right finger doesn't happen either I have to do this or then do that okay so it is not independently moving they are dependently moving but they don't have to be parallel right they don't have to be parallel so people looked at it so how do we establish correspondence in this here how do we establish stereo this is what we do if both eyes are looking at this point here okay if both eyes are looking at this point this is how your eyes look okay this is your retina behind it there is retina okay this is your retina this is your lens your lens and this is your retina okay so if you are looking at this point if you are looking at this point the, uh, the so you are basically you are moving your principal axis remember the principal axis of the camera you are your, you are moving your principal axis uh, towards the uh, towards the point that you are looking at so your principal axis uh, of both eyes are intersecting at one point. So they say that when you do this, okay, when you are looking at this one, this angle is important. This angle is F here. F angle. While you are looking at this one, the image of a image of a point away from the circle, okay, this circle, whatever wherever you look at this circle, this angle will be f the same so let me try to draw it let me try to draw it with green now okay okay let me erase these stuff so it wouldn't get okay so let's say i have a point here more realistic as always i couldn't do it this one and do the same thing here. Okay. So this F and this F are equal. 
Any point that are looking at this circle is called with Muller circle is going to be F. Any point while you are looking at this point or that point, any point that is outside this Muller circle will produce a smaller angle between these two angles, a uh, smaller angle between these two axes. That's D. So disparity in this case is not measured in terms of in terms of the retinal distance, but it will be measured in terms of this angle. D minus F is your disparity. If D is zero, that means that that point is on the Muller circle. If D is uh, negative, that means that that point is outside the uh, Muller circle, with Muller circle. If D is positive, then it is inside. Okay? So if D gets larger, that means that uh, that point is getting smaller and smaller, uh, or closer and closer, sorry. The Z value will get smaller and smaller. So uh, this is how they modeled human stereo. With the human stereo, we don't talk about the disparity because as I said, depending on where we look at, we change our camera geometry, okay? We cross our eyes or we make our eyes parallel. Okay, when you do that, uh, retinal disparity, retinal disparity doesn't make much sense. So they developed this idea, this idea of uh, using the uh, Muller circle. Okay, any questions on this? By the way, human focus system and human stereo are connected to each other in a very tight relationship. Okay? When you cross your eyes like that to look at the nearby objects, when you cross your eyes, okay, your lenses automatically, okay, your lens automatically shape, sh change their shapes so that you focus nearby objects. When your eyes are when your eyes are parallel, okay, you immediately relax your lenses so that they can focus on far away objects. So human stereo and human focusing system are connected together. That's why, that's why when you wear um, virtual reality goggles, well, how does the virtual reality goggle work? It shows you an image on your left uh, eye and on your right eye, different images, right? But that, that will give you a sense of stereo. But the, your eye focuses on the, the goggle screen, which is very close by, right? So when you make your eye pa uh, uh, parallel, so you are supposed to see far away objects, but now you are seeing very close by objects. That's not going to be that's not going to be very convenient for the eye. So the eye can tolerate this for a while, but after 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 some time, you will start getting headaches and uh, nausea and discomfort, eye discomfort. So some people never like it. Some people never like the 3D glasses, virtual reality glasses, and etc. They say that that's why they say that this virtual reality stuff will never take off because humans at an, human human at, uh, anatomy is not good for those kind of viewing conditions. Okay, any questions? If there are no questions, I will take some break. Let's be here. 15, 34, 10 
Okay, so this is uh, this is how we model human stereo, but that doesn't mean that human stereo knows about these uh, um, the uh, angle of uh, conversion and etc. This is how we model it. Uh, it works for to, up to some degree. So when you look at this one, I mean, when you look at this one, uh, there is a baseline, of course, baseline between the lines. So let's look at this trade-off between, I mean, should we have our baseline small or large? Okay. Remember, smallest baseline, which is zero, we don't like it. Okay. So what do you think? Should we have our baseline uh, small or large? Which one would you prefer better? Which one would you prefer more? Small baseline or large baseline? Let's look at this one. Z is equal to F times T over D. Okay. If T is very small, it's not zero. If T is very small, right? Smallest error that I can make with D is going to make a huge difference in Z, right? If T is small, smallest mistake that you are going to do with D is going to make a lot of difference in Z. And since D is calculated, disparity is calculated, I am estimating the disparity, right? And uh, and the, I'm measuring the disparity by uh, like PL minus PR. So uh, in terms of pixels, this is five and this is two. So I am talking about pixels, right? I mean, I am at least making half a pixel error in these kind of calculations. So if my T is very, very small, even the half a pixel error is going to cost me a lot. So D small is not very good. We don't uh, like small Ds or small, sorry, T's uh, being small is not good. So we like, we prefer larger T's, but there is a problem with the larger T's too. Let's look at this one. Left and right, baseline is small, small baseline, okay. With the short baseline, nice thing is, nice thing is, this area is our, okay, common field of view. I can do stereo in this area only. Because in the other areas, in this red area, or in the, in the blue area here, I cannot do stereo because I don't have the corresponding image on the, from the other camera. So, larger common field of view, okay, uh, field of view, uh, larger is good with the small baseline cameras, okay. But the small baseline camera means that T is small. Any error that you make with the uh, D estimation of T is going to cost you in Z. So a short, large common field of view is a plus. This is a plus, but this is a negative. Okay. For the long baseline, okay, our baseline is long now. This time, the common field of view is uh, short. Okay, so small common of common field of view and small depth error is the plus. And the other thing is more occlusion problems. Do you, can can anybody tell me wha, what do we mean by this? With the large long base, base lines, there is a problem of occlusion problems. What does that mean? In this case, uh, so many police that five eyes six, uh, but left eyes don't see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what you see from your left and what you see from your right will start be will start to be very very different. So it's going to be difficult to establish correspondence between these two, right? If you are looking at the box, one eye will see the left side of the box. The other eye, the other eye will see the right side of the box. So there is no correspondence between the left and right side of the boxes. Okay, so the, 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 it's, it's another problem with the, 
uh, large uh, large baselines, long baselines. So people said that why don't we do this? Okay, instead of choosing instead of choosing parallel cameras, let's let's try to rotate the cameras a little bit towards each other and do it that way. So there is a fixation point and this might be a good solution for the small field of view common field of view problem yeah well we could do this yeah but this is not going to solve the occlusion problems of the uh, long baselines okay it's not going to solve the long baseline problem this doesn't mean that you cannot establish rectification rectification is always there okay as long as you have common field of view rectification is going to work okay uh, we can do the rectification uh, uh, and with this one uh, the, the the disparities will be large enough to get a good z estimate okay to get a good z estimate and uh, the, the the other thing is the other thing is uh, occlusion is never going to go away you will have lots of occlusions with these kind of cases. As long as you have large T values, long baselines, the occlusion problem of occlusion will be there. Okay, good. I'm going to skip this stuff. And we, I think we talked about this already with the human stereo. Okay. So let's go back and from the beginning, we always kept talking about this finding correspondences okay we said that for a given point for a given point like this find the corresponding point in the other image and I, these images are rectified and i'm going to make my search on this line and comparing pixels is not a good idea so we need to compare windows let's compare windows to compare this window with all the windows whoever produces the largest similarity you don't expect to find the exact same window you don't find you don't find you don't expect to find the exact same window why because there is noise between the cameras and the brightness will be changing etc so what are we gonna do these are some of the matrix how do you compare two windows is this window same as this window so one metric is one metric is this Let's look at this one. Take all the pixels on in the left image, take all the pixels on the right image, and subtract them from each other. Take the absolute value and add them up. If f and g are perfectly equal, then this whole value will be what? If f and g are perfectly equal, what would be the final results of this formulation it should be zero it should be zero why because if they are all perfectly same it should be zero okay but that will never happen that will never happen because only if the images are the same these two windows will be the same if two cameras are taking the images of the same scene there will be differences because left and right cameras are not producing exactly the same image and there is no then etc okay so that's that that's one thing how about this one this one doesn't do the addition this one says that i will take the difference of all the pixels from left to right and i will pick the maximum difference so even a single pixel is different and i will take that difference okay this one says that left and right images i will take the difference and take the square and i will add them up okay i will add them up and again this should be this is supposed to be zero this is supposed to be zero okay uh, if the images are exactly the same but that will never happen so we expect this value to be small we expect this value to be small as small as possible so make your comparisons between this window and all the windows of this image 
on this line either you are doing sum of absolute differences or sum of squared differences by the way this is sum of absolute differences okay the either the sum of absolute differences or ssd then you will say that okay this uh, this window produced the smallest ssd so i am picking this window so this point will correspond to that one or rather maybe i should do that correctly maybe do this one okay i am picking this one though so the corresponding point for this blue the red uh, point is this one here that's what i would say that that's what i would say another comparison method they use is this cross correlation it just multiplies all the pixels of these two windows f and g and this one says that i am trying to maximize this one whatever whatever maximizes this is my choice because if two things are equal to each other they maximize they they, they, they will be maximized so what is the maximum size for a rectangle How, what is the relationship between the length and the height of a rectangle for a maximum size if you like to maximize your rectangle okay if you if you like to maximize the area of rectangle how would you choose your width and height square. yeah square it is equal right so the the size of this rectangle okay and the size of this rectangle or size of this rectangle if they if their perimeters are if their perimeters are the same uh, the, there is a proof for that uh, the, for that one right you take the derivative make it equal to zero and solve it square has the largest so if the if this one if the height and the width is similar then the area is similar if these two are similar then their multiplication should be the maximum that's the idea with the cross correlation and in fact these two are the most these two are the most uh, most widely used ones and they are very very they are very related to each other they are almost the same thing i minimize this one and maximize that one but they're almost the same thing why let me show you okay this is ssd right sum of square distances just open this expression up okay uh, i will end up doing this f square minus 2 fg plus g square right so this is ssd i try to make this as small as possible so f square is taking the square of the first image and taking the square of the second image so i don't need to calculate this one or that one because they are not you are not comparing anything with anything so to make this ssd as small as possible i need to make this i need to make this minus 2 fg uh, as small as possible okay because there is a minus there so to make that small fg must be large so multiplication of this multiplication of this should be as large as possible so that this sst is small okay so they are related but we use ssds a lot we use ssds a lot okay so tell me the problem with the ssd so you might be thinking that are we going to see anything that doesn't have any problems no there is always a problem with any solutions i mean can you tell me a can you tell me a perfect solution for any technical problem are there any perfect solutions for any problems the answer is no i don't know anything anything like that okay there is no perfect solution for any problems there is always uh, uh, some part of the problem to be improved efficiency issues okay expense simplicity 
etc. So there is a problem with SSD. What is the problem with SSD? Uh, we are looking for the pixel volumes of each coordinate. So uh, maybe this budget is all If if it's uh, if it's a sequentially tekrarlanan bir şeyse or well, that's, that, that's a problem with these kind of local operators, actually. I mean, if you are going to compare F and G, and uh, if F and G contains texture stuff, then you cannot do it. These are local, right? These are local operators. Uh, they, they don't look at the global stuff. That's true, though. I mean, you are saying that this is too local. I mean, this is a little bit better than looking at only a single pixel. That's what you are saying. Okay, but the main problem stays there. We didn't look at the single pixel value because by coincidence there would have been similarities and this is not addressing that problem. This is this is just delaying the problem just a little bit and which is right, which is right. Okay, that's true. The, the, the SSD or SAD or whatever, they are all very local operators, very local comparison methods and they may fail, especially for constant image areas. That's true or repeated textures. That's also true too. Other than that, okay, let's say that we, we take the hit, okay? We we are, we know that, we acknowledge that it's, it's a problem to have these kind of local operators, but within the local operators, there is another problem with SSD. Yeah, there is uh, it has a problem with uh, amplifi amplifying the errors, uh, but for example, if no, no. Uh, Selman, that's that's what we like actually. The, so th that's a good point. I mean, one pixel level, gray level uh, difference is just one, but if it is two, then it's going to be four, and for three, it is going to be nine. We like it. We like to penalize uh, larger pixel differences between two windows. That's why we prefer SSD over the SAD. Okay. So that's a feature, that's not a bug. Okay, any other guesses why why the problem with the SSD? Well, the, here is the SSD is trying to say that if F and G are similar, the pixels should be similar, right? That doesn't have to be the case. I mean, the left image could would be a little bit brighter than the right image. If there is a brightness difference between left and right, or the contrast difference between left and right, then SSD and SAD will give me very large differences, even for the uh, even for the same image window. Okay, so. That's something we don't like and we are trying to address it right now and we are, maybe what should we do? Maybe we should normalize our images first. Right? Normalize this one and normalize this one so that the overall brightness doesn't make much difference. That's what we are going to do in a few minutes. Okay. Let's say this is our left window. This is 5 by 3 by 5. Okay. 3 uh, columns and one, two, three, four, five rows. So that uh, there are total of 15 pixels in here. This is my left image and this is my right image. Again, 15 here too. Okay, SSD says that I am going to, SSD says that I am going to take a difference between this pixel and this pixel, right? And then I am going to take a difference between this pixel and this pixel and I'm going to take a difference between this pixel and this pixel etc and I add them up and I expect them to to be similar if, if there is if they if total difference is small then they are similar that's what we are doing normalized cross correlation says that okay no this is absolute values of intensities is not good this is what I'm going to do I will convert this, these 15 pixels into a vector, W. So this is a, this is a 15 element vector, W. 
and I will do the same thing for the right image W prime so this is a vector and this is a vector okay if I like to compare these two vectors like I do with the SST what I am going to do is I will just take the difference of these vectors take the square and that will give me a difference so uh, take the difference between these two uh, vectors and take the square of it and that will give you another vector and if that vector is very very small then I expect that these two vectors are similar but there are better ways of doing that okay there are better ways of doing it maybe I can do this maybe I can do this maybe I can measure the 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 angle between these two vectors okay maybe I can measure the angle between these two vectors how do you measure the angle between the vectors how do you measure the angle between the vectors yeah well it's, it's not cross product it's dot product right so I would take I would take w dot w prime so how do you take the uh, dot product of it you say that okay multiply this with this one right and multiply this with this multiply this with that and that kind. so I end up using the cross correlation right cross correlation say the same thing multiply multiply this one with that one so cross cross correlation is trying to take the dot product between these two vectors okay dot product between these two vectors so if these two vectors are similar to each other their cross product is going to be large y because the the angle cosine between them is going to be close to zero and the the cosine of zero is one that's the maximum that's the maximum better thing maybe we can do is just subtract subtract okay the length of the length of the w prime and length of the w from each from from the corresponding vectors so normalize the length of actually normalize the length of normalize the length of these vectors so that their lengths are one so if this is w prime and this is w their length should be one and one after doing that take the take the dot product that's going to give you the definitely angle between these two that's called normalized cross correlation and this is the formula for the normalized cross correlation the upper part is cross correlation i1 and i2 the lower part is the length of both of them right so i'm going to take the square of each element of the uh, left image and square of each element of the right image add them up together and uh, multiply them and uh, take the square root of it so this is normalized okay normalized cross correlation and this one works the best because with the normalized cross correlation since each image is each vector is normalized we are not affected we are not affected from the variations of the light variations of the light okay so basically this is what you do this is what you do you take you take one pixel and move uh, form your window around that pixel and compare that window in with all the windows in the other image and whoever produces the smallest sad ssd or normalized cross correlation you pick that as your corresponding element okay and that will give you the disparity once you have your disparity you write your formula you say that t over d is my debt or better yet you just report your better yet you just report your you just report your you just report your disparate image like 
Where is my disparity image? Okay, you report your disparity image like that. Okay, you establish correspondence. Once you establish your correspondence, you have, you have your disparity image, and this is your disparity image. You, you, you report this to your end user. Okay, good. Uh, by the way, this is a just stereo measure of stereo measure of um, uh, open CV input array left, input array right, and the output array and this part is outputted and I think there are many parameters to be chosen uh, inside this stereo measure class okay you are setting up some stuff and let's see the parameters actually open cv stereo measure Stereo matches here. Okay, so there's an algorithm stereo matcher and stereo matcher. Let's look at this one. So there are many setters image. Disparity value. So this this one is algorithm independent. There is a spec of parameter. I don't know what that is. I forgot. Compute left, right, and disparity. So the block size is maybe you guessed it. The size of your window. Okay, and you can set the maximum disparity. You don't have to check all the windows. You say that. My disparity could be at most 20 pixels, so don't look at uh, pixels that are away from the larger than the 20 disparity. And there is this mini minimum disparity too, too. Okay. These are the parameters. So you set your window size, you set your minimum and maximum disparities, and it establishes the correspondence and it gives you the disparity image. That's it. Okay. This isn't uh, scale invariant, right? Because uh, let's say we have two windows, but one window is kind of zoomed in. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No, no, no. This operation is not scale invariant. This is scale sensitive. If you are concerned about the scale, this is what you do. This is what you do. Let's say this is your original image. This is. Um, um, 256 by 256 left and right image okay you don't directly establish your correspondence on this large image first you make it 128 128 and then you make it 64 and 64 okay so if it is 64 64 image left and right you establish your correspondence between these two okay using standard 7 by 7 windows so you have your uh, correspondences, but you don't have the fine detailed correspondences, only coarse correspondences. Okay. And when you come to this image with that information, you say that, okay, for this point, this is my minimum correspondence and maximum correspondence. I'm expecting something between this and that. Okay. So you give that, you get more correspondence and you go even finer. Uh, finer. So this is called coarse to fine correspondence establishment okay this one is more scale invariant so at the beginning you are doing correspondence of larger objects okay not detailed objects general structure at the finest level you are doing the correspondence establishment of the finer details 
Ok. Ok. Okay, so so far the the correspondence establishment method that we looked at is window based uh, correspondence, right? So it was dense, so it gives you the whole correspondence for the whole image. But sometimes dense correspondence is not possible. Why is not possible? Because most of the image area could be most of the image area could be just empty, blank. If it is blank. SSE will not work, cross correlation will not work because all the areas are blank. What am I going to compare to? Okay, so in that case, maybe I shouldn't use these kind of correspondence establishment methods. Maybe I should switch to feature based correspondence methods, which are uh, the correspondence establishment methods that we have used in our homography example, stitching example. Run SIFT or SURF or uh, ORB, okay. On left and right image that will produce you lots of features and you just match those features and at the end you will have many uh, depth estimations for the image but not all the points only some of them okay so these are called feature based method okay these are called feature based method so you extract features and you match the features how do you match the features? There must be a similarity feature, similarity measurement. But with the standard descriptive methods, sift or surf, there is a way to match them already, right? So these are called feature based uh, methods. Okay, good. Which one would you prefer? Of course, I mean, depends on the application. Okay. Uh, uh, dense methods correlation based methods they produce a disparity value for each image point but it is expensive you have to run that algorithm for every pixel feature based methods they don't produce very dense disparity map but they are much faster and more precise okay so for so for some robotic applications for some robotic applications Feature-based methods may be, may be the solution. Why? Because if this is my left camera of the robot and if the right camera of the robot, I am moving that way, right? If in front of me, I don't see any features, okay, that are close by, then I can move in there, right? All the features that I see in front of me are far away then then i am fine to move maybe for some robotic applications i can do this okay regarding to selman's question again multi-scale matching is done many ways one of the ways is this okay Look at this picture, it is interesting. Again, one dimensional images to make it simpler. If there is a surface in the real world like this one, if I look at that surface, if I look at the surface uh, from the left, I will see this length. If I see it from the right, I will see this length. Okay. So they are, they, are, they are very, very, even though they are looking at the same object from the same distance, they see very different lengths of objects. This is an occlusion problem, right? If I rotated this L even a little bit further, this, would, this wouldn't see anything at all. So this is a problem. And this kind of stuff will create lots of problems for the, uh, for the correlation-based method or dance methods. Because... The, the, the image that I see on the left is very different from the image that I see on the right. And cross correlation will not fix this problem. It's a perspective problem, right? So left and right are very, very different. So how are we going to address this? Don't use, the suggestion is, for these kind of cases, don't try to use these uh, correlation-based stuff, SSD or SAD. So what should we do? Uh, there is a nice algorithm. The algorithm is this. Multi-scale edge matching. We are going to match edges. Simple edges. Right? That's true. 
simple edges. So this is what we are going to do. Convolve the two rectified images with uh, the, the derivative of the Gaussians, okay, second derivative of the Gaussians uh, of the images. Okay, so this means that I am taking the second derivative after applying the Gaussian. So I am doing the uh, uh, Laplace of Gaussian actually, right? Laplace of Gaussian. Second degree, second degree gradient of the Gaussian of the images. So zero crossings of the images again. But I am not going to do it just a single uh, case. I am going to do it with different sigma, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma 4. Sigma 4 is the largest. So this will get rid of lots of details. So this will give me the, the most general structure of the scene. Okay, then this, then this, and this is the finest detail. And then after that, I will find the zero crossings of the Laplace scene along horizontal scan lines of the filtered images. So I am going to scan the images one by one, and I'm going to find the zero crossings of the Laplace scene like that. So I am detecting edges first for this one. Okay, I am going to do it that way. Okay, so then after I did that, I will try to do the matching between the left and right. So let's see an example. Okay, if this is my left image edges and this is my right image edges, okay. I need to match this one with this one and I need to match this one with this one and I need to match this one with this one etc. Okay in the in the in the most general in the most uh, largest sigma value. If I can do this establishment on the same line okay what would I do in the same line I match this one with this one, right? And this one with this one, here. Okay. This red one and red one is matched. And I, if I put them on top of each other, I am matching these two. So what do I do now? What do I do now? I take the offset between them. I move here. I move this blue one over top of the red one. Blue and red. They are the same now. So I move them a little bit. Now I can take this movement and, and apply the same idea in the smaller scale, finer level scale. Now I have taken the offset of the large scale correspondences. I can apply the same idea, finer scale correspondences. Okay. So I take the offset. They are on top of each other. Then I will rematch and using a, a smaller scale sigma, I continue this. Okay, so this is coarse to fine, coarse to fine, multi scale edge matching. Okay, so get the general structure from one level and continue with this information. Any questions on this? Salman, did this answer your question? I gave you two scale related solutions. One solution was, one solution was this. No, 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 not that one, this one. Okay. Using a smaller resolution versions and get the correspondences for, uh, for, for dense application of the stereo for each point. And I'm using the OpenCV stereo matcher for that one. This one says that do the same multi-scale matching using the edges only. And that's going to give you better results. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another issue with the stereo is stereo is one of the earliest problems of computer vision. Left and right uh, uh, images and estimation of the depth and uh, starting from 1960s in the computer vision world people people worked on the stereo problems a lot and they are still working on it and uh, with the stereo problems geometry is almost solved 
everybody looked at all the problems of geometry. There is nothing to be solved with the geometry. Maybe some for efficiency issues and etc. But there is not much to solve about the geometry. But correspondence is still a problem. And getting the estimating the depth from multiple images is still a problem. People are working on it. Okay. That's why there are many methods to talk about about stereo. So one thing is this ordering constraint. Let's say this is my real world object, something like a sphere. There are three points on it, A, B, and C. If I take the image of this three-dimensional object on my red camera and on my blue camera. So A, B, C, since images are uh, reversed, C, B, A, right? And A, B, C on my right image, it is going to be C prime, B prime, and A prime. As you see, the images are very different. The difference between these two and the difference between these two on left and right images are very different, right? That's expected. Because when you, if you look at the same scene from two different angles, you're going to see different things. But the order of A, B, C order of ABC will not change. The order is there, but the, the, the distance between the points might be a little bit different. That is expected. So on a continuous surface like that, on an object, single object, the ordering will stay the same, order and constraint. Ordering will stay the same on an object like that. But if you have two different objects, this object and that object, let's look at the ordering. Ordering of A, B, C will not change, okay? It is A, B. Well, in that case, in that case, C is occluded. I cannot see it, but if I see it, it will be A, B, C, and D. And in this case, A, B, C is going to be, A is not visible anymore, but if it is there, A, B, C, ordering would have been the same. How about D? D is at the end after C. A, B, C, D, but in this case it's going to be, where is A? It's going to be D, A, B, C. Okay, so if if the object, if the point is from a different object, if there is occlusion like this, ordering will change. But on the same object, if I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the surface of the world from a satellite, so the surface of the world from a satellite, the ordering will never change because you don't expect the, you don't expect any serious occlusions on the world. Okay, far away objects ordering will not change because you don't expect the occlusions. Okay, you might say that there, there might be a self occlusion. Yeah. Okay. For example, let's say there is a point D. I cannot see D in in this case. But even if I see it, ordering will not change. Ordering will stay the same. Where is my ordering with D? In this case, it's going to be like that, okay? Okay, so on the same object, ordering will not change, and I know that. Okay, so let's come up with a, let's come up with an algorithm that enforces this ordering constraint, okay, assuming that the points are coming from the surface of uh, the same object, okay? Let's do that, okay? Um, so this is what we are going to do. Ordering cannot change, but from time to time, I may omit some of the points, okay? This will be, for example, in this case, a is not visible or C is not visible, etc. Okay, so um, this is what we are going to do. So let's say I am talking about now. I am talking about now one-dimensional, one-dimensional images. This is our first dimension. Uh, this is our first image, and this is the second image. So okay, how do you represent the one-dimensional images? Let me try to show it here like that, okay? So this is our x direction, this is our intensity. 
like uh, this is not a good idea let me try to let me try to okay keep it here this is intensity let's say this is my image there is a bright part here this is bright and and there is a small bright part there the rest of them is dark if i take this line and draw the one dimensional image so it's going to be it's going to be dark 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 and it is bright 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 it will come back dark bright like that so as you see this is a one dimensional image i just took one line out of this and made a one dimensional image okay if i have the stereo for the same line i have the left one dimensional image and right one dimensional image okay left one dimensional image and right one dimensional image if i let's say if i have if i have the same seen taken by the right ca camera maybe my right image is going to be something like this something like that so how am i gonna match this uh, uh, blue with the uh, red so this is what they do okay so this one this one here the the one that i am tracing with red color is my left image maybe and the one that i'm tracing with the green color is my right image like that okay so i'm supposed to there are there are distinct one two three four five six points okay and i'm trying to match those points with the other ones one one matches one two kind of matches both two and three that means what one of the cameras sees an edge like large linear area the second camera doesn't see it second camera see it as just a single point because of the occlusion okay between two and three here okay so these two areas are matching these two areas are matching and here in this case this one sees only a single point this one sees a large area and i'm trying to match these points with these points this can be done using dynamic programming and in fact this is very similar to edit distance matching between two strings how many people took the nlp course how many people took the nlp course raise your hands I, f I asked this question before but i forgot just one just two okay you guys know the edit distance measure right this is the exact same thing i like to find the the distance between this word and this word execution and intention the idea is this how many letters should i should i change so that execution becomes intention or intention becomes execution why would i need such a measure i need this measure so that uh, when i type execution did i really mean execution or intention if the edit distance between execution and intention is small then maybe that's what i meant but if it is large probably i won't so edit distance between execution and intention is five so what is five it looks like at the beginning i need to replace e with i and i need to replace n with x and towards the end towards the end i am not replacing it anything with anything it is all five complex so at the beginning i am making a few changes deletions or insertions or replacements but at the end it is the same thing so i am doing the same thing here i mean am i deleting some points from the left image or am i deleting some points from the right image sometimes i'm keeping it exactly the same so this this technique this technique matches left image with the right image line by line 
using dynamic programming and it is more than local okay this is more than local though you are saying that okay this is too local i mean with the with the with the some patterns repeating patterns this is not going to work this will work with the repeating patterns because this is matching the whole line with the whole other line of course the idea the idea is the idea is keeping the order and constraints and the idea is i don't have any occlusions okay and in fact this stereo matcher of open cv uses this idea it matches lines it matches the stereo pairs line by line okay uh, so it is matching two lines differently two lines independently so there might be some problems with the consistent between lines consistency between the lines but it works very nicely it works very nicely okay so this is called constraint of ordering okay i think i am out of my time i i, I am over five minutes and I, but I am done with the stereo correlation methods dance maps good for surface reconstruction but it requires lots of texture it doesn't like uh, illumination changes it doesn't like viewpoints different viewpoints feature maps are fast maybe good for navigation okay and you need to extract some features from the images like sift or surf okay and it is feature detection sensitive that's it about the stereo so i spent i guess two weeks about the stereo and that's enough next week i will start talking about camera calibration and after that we will talk about motion any questions can you uh, uh, you say uh, book and it's very Helpful to understand something in this lecture. Uh, can you tell us a bit uh, which is about uh, stereo? Our book, I mean, I think I took most of these slides from our book, from Zelensky's book, Zelensky's computer vision book. Okay, so that's good. Or, or, or why just, you just start from OpenCV documentation. That documentation is so nice. Okay, it talks about stereo, right? This one. Go to the uh, go to the tutorial on the stereo, and it has lots of references in it. And if you are interested, you start reading those references. Okay, thank you. Okay, and you need if you need to learn more about the stereo, uh, Zisserman's book again is good. Because Zisserman's book has, I think, the second part of the whole book is about stereo. Of course, it doesn't talk about how to match images because matching has nothing to do with the geometry. But geometry part of the stereo is interesting, of course. Okay, any other questions? If there are no questions, then I will stop here and I will see you next week. See you next week. Doa, where are your daughters? I don't, I don't hear them anymore. Yeah, they are not here now because of that. We, we, we miss them. Okay, see you. Thank you.